we begin our journey at the main town end terminus and head north, passing Glasgow 22. Passing the largest original building on the site, we then pass the workshop where the trams are kept in running condition, which sits at the side of the depot housing the extraordinary collection of trams. Kreitz Stand can be seen on top of the cliffs, a memorial to the Sherwood Foresters Regiment. The north and southbound tracks interlace here to allow the trams to pass under the Bowes Lion Bridge, which originates from the Queen Mother's estate. Now passing the bandstand at Victoria Park, this area has been revamped over the winter and will look much better when the museum opens for the 2012 season. Nearing the end of the double track, this is where the original metre gauge railway terminated. The blue staff, or token, is picked up here by the driver, allowing the tram onto the first of two single line sections. On the right is the recently closed quarry, which produced limestone. All the buildings have been abandoned, and there are no definite plans for the site at the moment. A new rail store can be seen on the left, some of which has been used to replace a few lengths of track on the single line beyond the trees. We're just arriving at the halfway stage in our northbound journey at Wakebridge. The driver swaps the blue staff for a yellow one and will then proceed up the line to Glory Mine Terminus, the northern end of the line. After the tram has been turned around, we head around the loop and back down the hill. There's a compulsory stop just before we leave the loop to make sure we don't start going downhill too quickly. Known by crews as the extension, it runs along a man-made ledge on the side of a hill, with the bowl of the quarry on the left, and Wakebridge Farm down in the valley to the right. There are spectacular views from here when the weather is clear, especially when viewed from an open top tram. Moving back into the trees, we stop just before Wakebridge, so that the tram does not enter too fast and cause trouble. On the left are displays about the lead mining in the area, maintained by the Peak District Mining Association. We stop here to pick up and drop off passengers before heading back down towards the main hub of the museum along the single line. Original track laying equipment used by the early volunteers can be seen on the right. Beyond the trees on the right is the Woodland Walk, which has some fantastic wood carvings and sculptures, a labyrinth and picnic areas with more great views across the valley. Back at the double track, the tram shifts over to the left. The driver puts the single line staff on the post for the next tram to pick up, as without it, the single line section cannot be used. And now you can see Victoria Park, otherwise known as the entrance or the bandstand stop. This is where everyone comes into the museum and can catch a tram right into the heart of the museum. The Blackpool Works loco makes an appearance with the overhead line tower wagon emerging from the depot, ready to do some maintenance work. The 
depots can clearly be seen on the right, the workshop being the three tracks with the green doors. Behind Craft Cottage is the Red Lion Pub, followed by Rita's Tea Rooms hidden by the trees. The small building at the left of the tracks contains the Eagle Press. The tall building on the right is the Library and Archives. At the terminus is Blackpool 40, waiting just beyond the museum's very own TARDIS. And just to finish things off, the short stretch which passengers don't normally travel on between the two town end stops. Thanks for watching, and I hope you come and visit this fascinating museum soon.